Did you know that some of the stars that we see in the sky no longer exist? I think it's difficult for those of us who don't know much about astronomy to conceive of that. But I believe the way they put it is that the star itself ceased to exist millions of years ago. And what we see coming towards us is its light. And it just boggles your mind when you think of that. And uh, I've thought, you know, you mean if you got onto a certain star in the universe, you could see the light passing by you, you know, this is the block of light that's on its way to Earth. And I suppose that in some funny way, that's it. So you remember old Einstein used that kind of illustration to say you can see that somewhere in the universe, everything that has ever happened is still going on. So even though the star has ceased to exist, its light is going on through the universe and somebody is seeing it, and that's going on forever. And so in a sense, anything that is done in the universe somewhere in the rest of the universe is being seen forever. So even though your mind begins to crumble as it pursues that thought, you do get hold of the idea that time is just a little finite way we have of looking at our localized earth. And that time and space are almost a concession that God makes to us little human beings. And that in actual fact, if you could get high enough above all the stars and above all the solar systems, you could look down and you'd see the whole thing taking place at this moment. And you'd see the light that started off from that star billions of miles away. You'd see it at that point, and you'd see it at a midway point, and you'd see it when it gets to Earth as well. And so in a strange way, you can see time and space are very, very relative. And really what we're faced with is one great eternal moment. But for us this morning, maybe the important point is the thought that even though the star ceased to exist millions of years ago, the light is still on its way. And that's the meaning of this communion. For we are convinced, in the words of Scripture, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. Therefore, if any one is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. In other words, the old in you died when Jesus died. And if you're still putting up with the anger and the selfishness and the anxiety and the jealousy of that old that was destroyed millions of years ago in eternity, you're putting up with a mirage, something that you don't need to endure. That's true. You may say, brother, this anger that I feel is real. No, it has real effects. When you let it run in your life, it has real effects. Just as the light from the star has real effects, you can see the light. It can provide light for you. But the star died millions of years ago. So with you and I. All that we were died with Christ, and all the power of it has died, and we are being deceived to think that we have to continue to let the light of that old self shine in our lives. And it's a lie, loved ones. It's a lie. For we are convinced, Paul says, that one Jesus has died for all of us. Therefore, all of us have died. 
with all our anger and our envy and jealousy. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, and we all are, because Christ has died for all, and therefore all have died. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come. You can believe that this morning, and you can live in it. That's it. You can. It's as easy as that. You can believe that and live in it. Or you can go out of this door and say, well, it, it's logical what he said, and it fits into the analogy used with the star, but, but I'm going to hang on to this anger and this resentment and this envy, and I'm going to keep on with my drinking too much, and I'm going to keep on with my smoking too much, and I'm going to keep on with my tranquilizers. Yes, I know it's logical what he says, but I'm going to do it. You can do that but you can just as easily this morning turn the other way. And you can say that makes logical sense what he said. If this God who is able to continue the light shining from a star that has died a million years ago is able to put me also in his sun and destroy all that is evil in me a million years ago, then I'm certainly able to believe that, and I'm certainly able to live it. And loved ones, that's the truth. I, I won't mention the brother's name, but he sat here for years listening to this truth, and then suddenly he realized, then I can stop being angry. I can, because the old self that produced it was crucified with, I can do it. And he changed that Sunday night, a few months ago, just changed like that. So can you, if you want to. Do you see that's why I say to you, you can stop sinning if you want to? Not if you're going to do it the old way, trying with all your power, but if you're going to go do it the new way, believing what we've just said is to be true, and then stopping it, then it'll work. That's what Paul said to the Colossians, for you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Put away fornication, anger, envy, jealousy. Put it away. Just, just take it off and put it away. Put it off. There's no reason. It's not stuck to you. God separated it from you when he crucified you in Jesus. You can just put it away. So you say, Lord, I believe that, Lord Jesus. I believe that this morning, and I'm going to live in that. And that's it. Faith is belief plus obedience. Belief plus living in the light of that truth. That's it. So, loved ones, that's the only condition you need to fulfill to have communion this morning. Those of you who think, oh, do you have to be a member? None of us are members. We don't have church membership. So, you don't need to be a member, but you do need to be real about your attitude to the fact that you were crucified with Christ in eternity, and all that is old and spoils your life has been destroyed in Him, and because of that, you are able to stop doing it this morning. And so, if you're honest about your sins this morning and are no longer going to make excuses for them and rationalize, and you're going to put them off, and you're no longer going to say, but I can't, I can't, I can't, but you're going to do it, then do receive communion this morning and receive the only one into your heart who has been there all along, but the only one into your heart who is able to help you walk in that grace. So that's it, loved ones. So it's really very simple. You know. So if you are willing to do that, loved ones, I would ask you then to, to receive the invitation. Let's stand. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in His holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession unto Almighty God. 
Let us be seated as we pray. We do not presume to come to this thy table, most merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so by faith, to receive thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that the bread which we break may be unto us the communion of his body, and the cup of blessing which we bless may be the communion of his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In like manner he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. 